Hi, this is Carl with another SOP video for managed service providers. Today, I want to talk to you about the error gap. You have to remember the error gap. Now, what the heck is that? Well, here's the deal. Back in the day, we used to have a backup system with a tape and you would take the tape out and then eventually it became a disc and you would take the disc out and you would take it off site. Why is that? Well, because the building might burn down. So if you have the tape backup sitting on a shelf next to the, the backup system, when the building burns down or is flooded, they're both gone. So you have to take that backup off site and offline in order for it to be a truly guaranteed air gapped backup. I did some voiceover work at the local radio station a while back and the guy who was helping me out there was explaining how they keep their broadcast system from ever having viruses. And in fact, he argued, it can't get viruses. And I thought, oh man, <laughs> you have to kind of check your arrogance here. How is it possible that you can't get viruses? And he explained that there's two systems at the radio station. One is all the digital stuff. So they get feeds from satellites, they get tapes, they get digital feeds, they get internet feeds. They get all kinds of sources of audio. They mix them as needed and eventually they produce what will go out over the radio. Cool. Then they have an entire system that only has one way to get information in. There are no USB ports, there are no network cables, there's, there's nothing that you can use to get data into this system except one analog input. And so between the two systems, the big fancy electronic one, it has an analog cable that's about six inches long connecting to the equipment that will actually produce the audio that goes out over the air. And so even if there were a virus infecting the electronic version, the output is audio only analog. And so it cannot bring a virus into the actual broadcast system. Now, I only tell that story because it demonstrates the links to which people could and should go to make sure that their backups are secure. I have long held the position that the single most important thing that we do as IT consultants is test backups. And there's one very simple reason for that. If you test a backup, two things happen. A, you got a backup. You're guaranteed that you actually have a backup because you're testing it. And if it doesn't work and you can't get data off of whatever the backup is, then you know you got to go fix it. And B, when you test a backup, you restore data from it. And so you know that your employees know how to get data off of that backup system in an emergency. When they're scatterbrained and running around and maybe high anxiety, that's not the time for training. The time for training is every single month testing that backup. Now, today, a lot of people don't have that air gap. Their data goes from wherever it's stored, on site, in the cloud, to the backup system. And then the backup system sends you a picture that says, by golly, we're really working. All is good, doki doki. But if you don't test it, then all you know is that you got a report. And the report is not the thing. The report is the report. The thing is actually being able to get data where it belongs in an emergency. And many of these backup systems don't have another way to get the data. So you are responsible for saying, okay, I've backed it up to this cloud. Now I need to take a copy over here, whether that is offline or to a different cloud or whatever. But you always have to remember that there can't be one point of failure. And you know, a lot of people always poo poo the old backup systems, but the reality is with an old backup system, you could have 
a different tape or disc every night. You could have a point of, of uh, ultimate return where once a year or once a month, you could go back to those restore points. And we could replicate all of that online, but you still have to say, what happens if that fails? What happens if the system that is backing up my data ceases to exist? What will I do? And so you need to be responsible for making sure that there is a backup of the backup or there is a, a way to get that data back. Now, in a perfect world in the 21st century, we have a BDR, it costs a few hundred or maybe a thousand dollars a month and everything is good. But what if that doesn't work? What are you gonna do? Because one way or another, you have sold those backups to the client. They don't care what you call it. They don't care what the technology is. You have sold them peace of mind. And so you have to figure out how you're actually going to deliver that because things that you cannot imagine happen all the time. Something to think about. This is Carl Polichuk for Small Biz Thoughts, wishing you the best of luck in your managed service business.